Welcome back to this Elm Creek adventure on Farming Simulator 22, day 14, with me, Mr. Sealy P. It's December the 14th. Crack on with that advent calendar. Uh, it's, well, technically 10 days to go, Christmas Eve into Christmas Day. 10 days. Oh, got a lot to think about. Um, I've, I've tried to stay in here in the warm. It's snowing again, as you can see. This is still a bit of a problem, isn't it? I've just, you know... Hmm. Haven't really been indoors at any point when it's been raining or snowing, but now I am. It's a bit concerning. Anyway. I've got a few jobs. Yesterday, I finished all the seeding. That got done. We did soybean up here on my field. As you can see. It is growing, but it's not fertilised yet. Going to need to crack on with that today, before everything freezes, I think. Uh, fruit delivery is going to be first. Then when I get back, I need to supervise the um, construction of um, a, a building. I'll talk about that when we get back. Uh, what else did I do? Grass, we did in that one. You saw me doing that. This one I went for... Oh, yeah, sorghum. I haven't done sorghum before. Put sorghum in this one, and this one, my mind's gone blank, where did I put in this one? Oh, canola, canola in this one. Like I say, they're going to take a while to grow, but they're in the ground, and that'll be the prep work done. I need to keep an eye out for these snowmen, I've had this really weird situation. I was going around as well, um, off camera, looking for some more, um, some more toys, because the premise was that I was trying to get them so they'd go back into the toy shop and a few people messaged me, I can't remember if I've said this already, to say that um, the toys will only appear in the toy shop when you've found all ten of a particular type and then one will appear to represent it. So I thought, well, I'll try and find ten of a few others. Blimey, it's been a game. I've been all the places I can think of, looking all over the place for stuff and I've really struggled. There was a point to what I was saying then. Oh, it doesn't matter. Oh, I might come back to it. I might not. <laughs> Probably more likely I won't. Let's put the lettuce on there. Now, I'm pretty sure that the lettuce, where did I say it was? Johnson's, wasn't it? It's strapped down already, but we'll put some extra straps on. That should be all right. Let's go and grab a tractor. I think we'll grab the John Deere. We'll check the prices. So, what are we looking at? It's here somewhere. There we go. Strawberries. Best price at the moment is at Johnson's Farmer's Market as well. And the price is climbing. 538. That's brilliant. We can do it all there. And the lettuce uh, was Johnson Wall Grocery Mart 2336. We'll do that on the way past then. So head out to Johnson's Farmer's Market. And like I said, when we get back, we'll sort... Um... Let's get some lights on, I think. It's a bit of a grim day. I don't forget snow settle again. Yes, oh, I remember what I was talking about. Yes, I was going around looking for a few more toys. And somebody messaged me and showed me a picture of a snowman at the grocery mart to say that in December you get snowmen. And some of the snowmen have um, toys that need to be collected. But you can only collect them in December because that's when the snowmen appear. And since then I've had all different people sending me pictures of snowmen around the map. I haven't had one. On December the 14th, no snowmen anywhere on the map. I've been to the different locations where people sent me pictures of theirs. Nothing. You watch. We'll go down there. It'll be a snowman. I thought maybe the snow needs to settle. So when the snow settled on the what was it, the tenth, eleventh, whatever day it was, like, the snow settled. I went round and checked those places. Nothing. So it's a bit weird. Yeah, one was here. The picture that, that was sent to me was here. Uh, one was out at the lake near the carpentry. Um, where was the other one? I'm trying to think. But they've been all over the place. Oh yeah, down the farm in the uh, southeast corner. So what we'll do, grocery mart, is we'll hop out. Let's undo the strap and let's deliver these, shall we?
That's all right, isn't it? We have a few of those. Nice bit of extra money. It's going to the strawberries. I say it's not, it's not mega money, but this is more realistic, I think, to um, not a survival. I suppose it's a survival. Let's play. I'm surviving a blizzard at the moment. A sort of more of the start from scratch. You know, I think my start from scratch let's plays before it doesn't bother me never has done you know you kind of build up and i've always said on a let's play you reach that tipping point where you find that thing that makes you money once you start to make money and a good bit of money you can build up your equipment much quicker this is much more of a slow burn because i'm doing shorter episodes as well and because of the way i'm doing it with seasons growth off but also because i'm doing you know the days i'm doing you know it's a 25 day month you know it's a, it's a completely different feel to how I normally do it. So it's a much slower, more, like I say, more realistic thing. You know, I'm going to be going off and doing small jobs, doing a little bit here and there. We're making a little bit of money every day. I mean, we're up to 83 grand. I arrived here, minus 24. So, and we have bought two second-hand tractors. We've got a trailer, we've got our own plot of land. You know, we've done a few bits, you know. Oh, that was the other thing I was going to say. Just out here, opposite the... Um, animal dealer they've got a, a tank and they pipe slurry out from the um, livestock market so if you need to come and buy slurry you can come and get slurry that's kind of handy so we'll probably come along and get some of that because I need some fertilizer so what I was thinking was where am I going to that's a sawmill Johnson's is this way is it um, yeah so what I was thinking was um, do the double application, I think, probably on the fields. So we'll go and grab a slurry tank, we'll lease one, slurry spreader. We'll come up here, we'll buy some slurry. I did think about manure, I thought about muck spreading. I have to be careful here, because when I drove up here the other day, a car came along that side road, just didn't even slow down. Didn't slow down. Flew out of there. There you go, fresh produce and we are helping to deliver said produce now I think it goes over this one because it's not one you tip is it there we go it's alright so we've made just over $800 that's barely enough to pay for a worker for 10 minutes <laughs> Every prices of workers. I was talking um, with Mrs. Silly P yesterday and um, about what I was doing, and she was asking me about the situation regarding uh, mods. And thank you to Jeremy and Google Pop and a few different people that have messaged and commented and said a few different things. And it's that I mean, such a dilemma at the moment. Because this has been a kind of start from scratch, and because I'm doing the advent thing, like I've already said, it's, all, it, it's a very strange way of doing things. It's a little bit different to what I normally do. So, and I said in the last video about, you know, as a, as a content creator, it's, it's a tricky one because, you know, I'm kind of, I suppose, known for my console mod reviews. And Jeremy did make a good point when I said about well, PC will still get mods. Well, they're, they're stopping um, cro um, cross-play mods, um, which is console compatible. So anything that was cross-play, they won't get at all but they will still get other mods. So anything that gets released into the mod hub that's not a cross-play mod, they will get, obviously. But obviously cross-play mods, they won't, because that's what's console compatible. Um, I kind of didn't make myself clear. I said, you know, they'll still get mods, and we won't. They won't. Obviously, they won't get any of the ones we were supposed to get, but, you know. Um, and Mr. CDP said to me, what are you going to do like, with regards to content? And I said, I, I really don't know. Uh, Google pop up messaged me and said, had you thought about starting your second Let's Play? maybe do an Obeleron and do a different style, you know, maybe start that one off on maybe two day months or one day months or, you know, whatever it might be I decide to do. Either start with more money or start with the start machinery or, you know, a slightly different tack, you know, look at it from a different way, uh, which I thought I could do. But then there is also that big dilemma. Now, people often ask me, you know, what are you doing? Hello? Do you reckon I see this big you know, tractor with a trailer? No? Okay. <laughs> no. I've lost my spell. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. This has happened in the past. And 
I wanted to run this along with mod reviews and, and waiting of course for that now more elusive first map release you know everyone's like well, when's the first mod map going to release for, for uh, ever 22 and the, the dilemma is and always has been and it's why on, on FS19 and you know 17 to some degree I missed out on some let's plays that I wish I had done or could have done and didn't do and that's because I was doing a let's play or two let's plays and and I'm still trying to finish off my Italian demo because I want to finish that I know not many people are probably going to go back and watch it but I want to make sure that let's play is tied up nicely I don't like finishing a let's play part way through I don't want to just jump about um, and sort of it gets confusing when you've got three four five let's plays on the go you know you're doing one this style one that style one multiplayer one you know and I'm not knocking anyone that does you know do it however you feel comfortable doing it but that's not ever been something I've been comfortable doing trying to keep up with everything you know and the problem is if I'm running two you know, sometimes I would do one with seasons, one without, one with precision farming, one without, one, you know, whatever, one start from scratch, one with a load of money, depends on how I want to go about it. And what would happen is then a new map would drop, one that I really, really wanted to do, and I was in the middle of two other Let's Plays. I couldn't just stop a Let's Play and say, right, I'm not doing that one anymore. I'm, I'm stopping that because I want to do this map. And the problem is then by the time you finish off that Let's Play, the map you wanted to do, so many people have already done a let's play or they're a big way through their let's plays and you stop and think are people really going to watch the content i'm doing on it now because they've seen content on this map you know it's weird if you don't make content if you're not a youtuber it's a weird thing you start working out you know how what you know i don't know it's difficult i still want to make videos i still want to put them up because i enjoy playing it but i suppose you then become beholden to all that stuff, all, all the things I never really wanted to become beholden to, which is like YouTube, the YouTube algorithm, what people want to watch, what people want to see, and you move further away from what's you, further away from you being you, you know? I'm doing this because I want to do it, I'm doing it because I enjoy doing it, I'm doing it because I want to help people, I'm doing it because I want to show people my guide videos, that kind of stuff, the rants, the chats, that kind of stuff, or am I doing it because I want to make sure that I get the best coverage. It's a, it's a, bit, it's a real tricky one. Anyway, um, so I'm holding out thinking, you know, what do I do? Do I wait, carry on doing this one and just tick over? They said later in the month, it's the 10th today, uh, the 10th, the 14th today, 10 days to go till Christmas. So when I say later in the month, how much later? Could be the 25th, 26th, it could be the 29th, it could, you know, it could be a fair way away before we get the update before anything gets fixed or it could be the next three four five days we just don't know do i start a second let's play and then all of a sudden the first new mod map drops and i'm in that position again what do i do you know so it is a problem it's a dilemma and i'm not sure what to do now what's going to pop up on the screen is uh, a text i got from um chris um of chris and angie who live just there who have very kindly let me start, well, <laughs> building, <laughs> rebuilding the farm, improving the farm. Let's say improving, not rebuilding, it's already here. And it says, uh, Verizon, Verizon Cellular, Cellular has asked to place a tower on the farm. If you could show them where we want it, we'll give you that income to help with finances. That is your call, by the way. We could split it, we could give it to them, it's type thing. Um, laugh out loud. Angie has given that proposal a thumbs up. So, they are going to be arriving, and they're going to be placing a cell tower. Mobile phone mast, however you... Yeah. Um, have I become a sellout? <laughs> You're welcome. Every episode I still have a dad joke. Um, but I'm not sure... I need to supervise where it's going to be put. Um, we have talked about possibly here. Which we could do, it's fairly flat. Um, but I'm worried about access in and out of the barn, that kind of thing. Uh, we also considered maybe out the back here. Because it's kind of out of the way from the farm. We've got a little bit of a, a bit here, maybe up here where it's a little bit flatter. Right by the track, so it's easy access and it's away from the road a bit further. 
What do you reckon? Maybe, yeah. So give me a few minutes. They should be arriving and they should be installing that. And then from there, we're going to be heading... Oh, yeah, we're going to go down to the uh, store. We're going to grab a slurry spread. I do need to get that up with a bucket. I dumped it there on the floor. Uh, we will get rid of those stones at some point. Make sure none of them roll away. And, uh, yeah, we'll get a slurry spread up. We'll go off to the livestock market, grab some slurry, and we'll get these fields fertilised. Double application. We'll get through it fairly quickly, so there might be a few runs backwards and forwards. And let's get um, let's get these fields done. I'm really... I was hoping as well that if those snowmen did appear, we could, you know, go out and hunt for the snowmen around the map as well at some point. We did the toys, but we could do a snowman hunt, you know. Um, but I, I don't know. We'll just have to see. We'll keep plodding on. I don't know if there's a certain point in the month when they appear or not. But who knows? I'll be honest, it's 12 o'clock, and I did shelter in here most of the time, but I can see, and could see, what they were doing. That will pay a little bit. It's not, actually, I don't even look to see how much. It pays a little bit. Thank you to Chris and Angie for that. It wasn't expensive either. Um, it's a, about a grand, I think, it costs. Um, and the great thing was, it's a kind of prefab. This arrived, literally, on a trailer. They just plonk down on the pads up goes the mast piece of cake really all hooked up so there we go that's up that's done now it's under slurrying did the placement go as well as I'd hoped no <laughs> and I broke my own rule because I didn't <sighs> didn't save it before so when it placed it placed with this big square pad which unfortunately, because of where I placed it, yes, that's my field, so I could do around this side. This bit here is on the border of what I own here, and the next bit, which wouldn't then let me, I wanted to put gravel in there. So I suppose what I can do at some point is maybe see if we can lease that field, if you know what I mean. We'll lease that bit, and then hopefully we can put the gravel in here. We'll have a tinker. We'll see, we'll see what we can work out. And I, want to, I was hoping we could maybe grasp this, but we'll see. We'll sort something out. I'm sure it'll be fine. I'm going to grab this dyer. Let's go down and get a slurry spreader. Let's get these fields done. That's all we haven't got as well. We don't have a jet wash. I suppose we could do one of those at some point, couldn't we? Where should we put it? I suppose that could be over here, couldn't it? There's a water point over here which would allow us access to it. Now, what should we put one in now? I think there's one. It's not too expensive. Let's go into here. Try to think what was under tools. There's the yeah, the Karcher one is four thousand five hundred, but there's the steel one there for one five fifty. You know what? Let's go with that, shall we? Um, doesn't really matter which way around. Do we want it there? Is that going to be you know, out in the open? It'd be a lot easier for bigger vehicles. A lot of people have been saying some of the mods and stuff now. Yeah, it's weird. A lot of people have been saying to me, oh, you can place. I mean, uh, to be fair, I haven't got a shed per se. But inside barns and buildings and sheds, you can place a lot of these things now. But everything I've tried to place inside a building has said it overlaps with another object. So potentially some of the more open ones it will do. And we could just set it by the side here, but that again, we're quite close, and it's not letting me. Mm. Over by the tree, maybe? No, we'll do it over here. I know, sorry, I'm just, it's, it's a big decision. Where did you place your first jet wash? <laughs> so there we go, we have a jet wash as well now. Hooray! Lots, lots getting done. If I come across the snowman, I'm going to freak out. Uh, and then once the slurrying's done, I am thinking, seriously considering, um, I said about doing the sugar beet harvest, didn't I? I said about maybe like taking on a whole load. But again, there's that multiple contract thing. 
Depends where they want them all done. If they're all to the same cell point cabin issue, if they're off by train, you know, or do I just do one? Again, I'm an RN. Um, I do still want to take on all the the cultivating jobs, get all the cultivating jobs done. I was just hoping for some more wintry stuff, you know. I want possibly the carols and snowing all day today. We might get snow settled tomorrow for the 15th. So possibly the 15th we could do some snow blowing. It depends if there's anywhere that needs snow blowing. And obviously there's that problem as well. Usually you need to own the land. Well, I say usually. Again, that's an assumption based upon FS19. I don't know if that's the case anymore. Is that the case anymore? I'll have to check. There's all these things I haven't checked yet. Number plates are done. Did those off camera. What were you meant to say? That, um, I assume I'm doing something completely wrong. But that little... Um, keypad the chat pad that someone suggested and said it works perfectly um, I bought it I installed it I Bluetooth connected it to my PS5 hooked it onto my controller I couldn't get it to work on the um, number plates thing at all I, I, I don't know what I was doing wrong but I, I could not get it to work so I don't know bit of a weird one so slurry tanks we don't need to go mad because obviously you know it's gonna cost us a lot of money What's that one? 13,000 litre for 58 grand. What's that to lease? Nope, lease. Only three grand to lease. And it needs an attachment on the back. Uh, that's no, so we'll need that as well. well that's annoying. Uh, God, they get expensive quick, don't they? Or do I just go really basic and just go for that one? The FarmTech SuperSys 800. 15 meter spread, 8,200 litre tank, that's going to go down quite quickly. To be fair, how much is that to lease though? 1147, that's a bit more palatable, isn't it? Do we want to lease it? Let's lease that. We're a small farm with small machinery, let's, let's grab that. And whiz out to the livestock market, let's grab some slurry, hopefully that won't be too expensive either. Double application onto the fields. Lights. Climbing. We don't seem to make a lot of difference in this weather. Do I want a beacon on? I think when we're fully laden on the way back, we'll put a beacon on. At the moment we should be right. Yeah, what was I doing the other day? I was doing a contract off screen. What contract was it? And as I was driving up the road here, a car came up me inside and just slammed into the back of whatever it was towing. Must have been a cultivator. Just walloped straight into the back. Knocked me right across the road. It's like, um, hello? Again, I, I'm a pretty big vehicle. Yes, it did bother me somewhat. I keep looking out every time I'm driving around anywhere for more toys and stuff. And, um,. I mean, I've, I've honestly been all over the place. I've been in drains, ditches, under tunnels, under bridges. I feel like a proper troll. Um, well, maybe in one of those. I haven't really looked in some of those. There are other places around the map I haven't been. You know, I've kind of been for where there are buildings and installations and houses and that kind of thing. But I suppose there might be some out in the woodlands. There's a lot of paths and, and walkways and stuff. Um, well, I suppose there could be a load as well. It's an interesting thing, within a few days of the game being out as well, people had already posted their, that, those videos, because I know on this one it's 100, it's 10 lots of 10 I think it is, of, of the different toys, and if you collect all 100, it's 1,000, for each it's 100,000, you get a million as the payout, and people already posted, you know, 100 found, which is interesting because that thing, if it is the concept, because I know the picture, someone sent me a picture of one, and the snowman was holding one, on the little rowing boat out on the lake. So I went to the lake, rowing boat's there, there's no no toy. So how do that, you know, how do you work that out? How, how does somebody suddenly go, oh, I know what, there's probably snowmen that have, you know, it's that kind of, I, if it was me, based upon previous versions of the game, based upon gold nuggets and coins and that kind of thing, I'd probably go around the map and I'd search around and you get to a point you think, I can't find them all, I'm, you know, I'm missing a load. 
my first thought would not necessarily be, oh, it's probably going to be in winter, isn't it? <laughs> why, why would that be your first thought? Um, right, let's cross over. Hopefully this isn't going to be too expensive. Uh, we want slurry. 202, 8,200 litres. We'll see how far this goes. I can see us doing quite a few runs backwards and forwards on this. I'm, I'm seriously loving everything I've been doing now where I load stuff up, the tyre deformation. I know we had tyre deformation on FS19, but it never seemed as pronounced. On here, it really does, you know. I was trying to set up a test video yesterday and it didn't work. It all went a bit pear-shaped, so I didn't record it. But in setting it all up, I was taking a slurry tanker much bigger than this out to the field and fully loaded and even with a tractor that was rated for the right horsepower it really struggled up the hill and the tyres were, I mean they were almost flat, it was crazy but at the same time it looked absolutely awesome I have had, um, I, I know I keep saying I have, I, lots of people message me all day long about all different sorts of things and problems they've had and issues they've found and that kind of thing. I'm still, I know when I've said it a few times and people have kind of, not rounded on me, but when I've said, you know, it has its issues, it has its problems, there's an update coming, but it's still playable and I'm still loving it. Despite those, I think that the gameplay and what has been brought to the game far outweighs the problems. And then people have messaged me to say that, they disagree. The problems are far worse. It's unplayable. And again, everyone's entitled to their opinion. Like I've said that before. Of course, if that's how you feel, you're entitled to feel that way. Um, but I'm still, I'm loving it. And I haven't encountered some of the problems people have had, and, and that's quite worrying. It's you know not that I haven't had those problems that people are still having problems. You know. Right. Let's turn that off. I need to make sure though that this is so annoying. I have my side panel. So annoying. Help window. Uh, we want to go activate double application rate. Yes, please. Am I 15 meters out? I don't know. Turn that back off again. Hard to tell. That's a bit better, isn't it? Right, we are going fairly slowly. Say so fairly slowly. We are going very slowly. Five miles an hour. But with the double application rate, we're getting our full two fertilising states down. Obviously, double. <laughs> Just really need to explain that. Um, we're getting those down. I should have done this. Really. We'll check the map in just a second. But we are getting through this fairly quickly. But 220 for a full load, apart from the fact that we're going backwards and forwards a few times. Which isn't too much of a problem. I don't want to waste that. Let's turn that off a sec and then we'll go... There we go, back on. We'll do the grass field, we'll do that field over there as well. Wow, that looks... That looks slick. Oh, I think I've come over too far, haven't I? We will double check when we get to the end of this row. out. It's hard to tell in certain light, isn't it? It's getting so the light shines off of it. There we go. That's better, isn't it? So, there we go. Fertilised 100%. If we check the map. Go to our field. Go that way, that way. There we go. Two fertilizers to say it's done in one pass. That's pretty good. Now that's obviously yeah, we're gonna do a few runs, aren't we? There's no two ways about it, we're gonna do a few runs. And there's little things as well that I think um not that we not again, not that we're taking for granted that depends on the angle you're looking at and that kind of thing. I was out well, it was when I was doing one of the harvest contracts the other day, not recently, like a little way back. <clears throat> and as I drove past one of the fields, there we go, we're out. The wind blowing across the field and all the crop was moving with the wind. It was like, 
wow, that's amazing. But you don't always notice when you focus on other things. Um, and again, it was another one of those conversations I had with Silly G the other day. Uh, which we were talking about, you know, when you watch a video, when you watch someone's video and you go, oh, they missed this or they missed that. Or, you know, when I was playing a lot of SnowRunner and I was looking for things, you know, upgrades and stuff. And people would comment, so you drove straight, pa straight past it. When you're kind of in the zone, so to speak, so when I'm recording and I've got something in my head I need to do, and I'll be doing like I'm doing now, I'm driving. So I'm driving, I'm thinking ahead of what I need to do, where I'm going to, I'm thinking about, you know, we'll see, you know, what looks nice, you know, the camera angle, zoomed in, zoomed out, do I want it in cab, out of cab, you know, that kind of stuff. I'm also thinking about what, whoops, turn that off. I'm also thinking about what I'm going to say as I'm saying it. I'm trying to think ahead. Um, and also then when you make a mistake, you're like, oh no, you know, I'm gonna, I've got to remember to come back and when I edit this, I've got to edit that out. You know, so many things going through your mind. It's very easy to miss things. It's very easy to make a mistake, you know, but I always find from the outside looking, it's very easy then to notice those things. It's far easier. I'll go back in and edit and go, oh, how did I miss that? How did I do that? How did I, you know, it's, it's funny how you kind of get into that zone. I don't know why I started talking about it. I was just talking, yeah, just talking to Silly G about it. She was asking me something. Uh, oh, it was about the crops. I was talking about the crops swaying. And it's very easy when you're doing other things that you don't notice. You know, you're sort of caught up in what you're doing. Well, I suppose that's the same with real life, isn't it? You know? You're paying attention to one thing and not necessarily focusing on something else. Beacon on. Let's go again. I have been, have been, I have, there's a bit of an outlay actually, but something that I think might be worth it. I was talking to my, um, one of my tech gurus, <laughs> Mr. Dalek JD, that helped me with my PC setup and stuff. And I had spoken to um, DJ a little while ago about this, and I've got my El Gato um, capture card. Um, Mr. Dalek JD was more down the route of, if I record to PC and then edit on PC I still edit on my PlayStation but I was looking more at streaming so the Elgato set up so when I stream it's absolutely fantastic love it but when it was all hooked up I noticed while I was away with Mississippi P the other day the TV in the in the cottage where we were was a 4k TV and I said so I don't understand the picture seems a lot crisper it seems a lot clearer and my thumbnails seemed a lot crisper and clearer while I was away and I said, I've noticed when I got the new game, I was a little bit disappointed because I was taking thumbnails and they seemed a little bit blurry here and there. They weren't really very nice. So when I got back, I checked my, my monitor, my 4K, I've got a 4K monitor that I'm playing on my PlayStation. And um, it was saying 1080. And I was like, I don't get it. So I checked all the settings. I went and checked when I bought it. Definitely a 4K monitor. It was because the Elgato capture card is a 1080 because it's hooked in, sort of wired into the whole thing. It was capturing, and when I stream, streams at 1080, 60 FPS, which is great, there's nothing wrong with that at all. Because I still had it plugged in, the TV was adjusting itself to that, um, and I was only getting 1080 resolution on some of the stuff I was doing, which was a bit of a problem. So what I decided to do was invest in a new Elgato. So I've bought, and it has been delivered, although I haven't installed it yet, I've got a 4K60 Pro Elgato. Um, and that actually plugs into the PC, onto the motherboard, rather than being an inline one with cables. Although I haven't installed it yet because I'm not a PC person and I'm a little bit, you know, I don't want to put it in wrong, I don't want to make a mistake, I don't want to break anything, kind of thing. Um, so what should be, from then on, I should be, have no problem at all with my video, with my um, thumbnail capture, but also when I stream, I should be streaming 4K, in theory. <laughs> I thought, you know what, every now and again I, I will get something, an investment in the channel, an investment in me, an investment in what I'm doing, um, and that was the sort of next thing I thought I'll get. So yeah we'll see how that pans out if and when i ever actually um fit it to the, to the pc i know there'll be loads of you guys that again 
Oh, it's easy, don't be ridiculous, just plug it, it's a piece of cake, it just, you know, it's a plug and play kind of, you know. I get it, but I'm also, I'm always very wary, I don't want to damage anything or break anything. Or you know. just like, look like a right Charlie when I get it wrong. Okay, double application in the snow continues. I will see you in a bit when hopefully I'll have it all done. Because I've seen myself having to do quite a few runs backwards and forwards. It's now nearly one o'clock in the afternoon. Snow is falling all around me. Anyway, yes. See you in a bit. It is now just gone 20 past two in the afternoon. We should be finishing up. I think I've done about six six loads, I think, something like that. So not too expensive, really, when I think I've done, what, four fields, 200 to 220 per load. There's a little bit left in there. And if we check on our map, here we go, 45, 46, 44 and 48, all double fertilised. We're good to go. We can leave them. All winter crops. <laughs> so, here's what I'm going to do now. Um, I have been keeping an eye, as I do every single day, on the second-hand sales page. And there's something very interesting in there. But that will be for tomorrow. That's going to be a surprise. Hopefully it'll be a surprise. I will take this back in a little while. Um, and in doing so, we'll probably, while I'm there, purchase the sale item. What I am going to do now, though, is grab... Nope. Just get that. Out. I'm going to grab my trailer that's in here, and I can't remember which way around the trailer is, so what we'll do is open the barn, because the price for corn is the other way, of course it is. Uh, the price for corn, if we come back down to here, that we've got in storage um, at Feed and Grain South is at 826 That's not a bad price for the corn, so we'll take the corn, we'll sell that. Sunflower, it's dropped a little bit, uh, there were better prices actually, but Johnson's Farmer's Market is at 1498 I could get rid of that. We got rid of all the potato we had. Uh, we've got a little bit of wheat, but that is Angie and Chris's. I don't know what they want to do about that. Maybe we'll sell that at some point. Um, and that's all we've got in storage at the moment. So the corn I'm going to take now down to Feed and Grain South. We'll make a little bit of money on that. What am I doing? Drive round, then open the door. Oh dear, why would I want to called dead walking. That's what we always used to call it when I was a postman. I was a postman for 17 years. Um, and if there was a, a place on your delivery where you walked past houses you'd already delivered to or there were spaces where there were no houses, it was all referred to as dead walking. So you'd always try and um, work out your delivery route, especially if you're on foot, um, so that you delivered everything as efficiently as possible because it took you less time as well. So up and down streets and to the next street, and you wanted to avoid as much dead walking as possible. Sometimes it wasn't possible, sometimes you just had no choice. You had to walk past places you've already done. It's weird how when you change jobs, I still have nightmares, probably, probably nightmares. <laughs> I, in the night dreaming of the fact I'm still on the post that I'm, I'm going into the delivery office in the morning um, and I've got there and there's tons of posts like especially at Christmas time it always reminds me of it at Christmas time um, and there's so much you, you need to do and you're trying to work out how you're going to carry it all Christmas is always horrendous I mean you can have bad times of the year of course you could but obviously Christmas deliveries your pouches would be heavy you know you might have a delivery where you went out with four or five pouches of mail regularly Christmas that could be eight nine pouches you know with packages and parcels and that kind of stuff as well it could get absolutely crazy and um, yeah I still I still wake up now you know having those kind of oh when I get into work I hope it's not too bad I hope there's you know <laughs> I haven't done that for a long time oh dear it's got to be what try and think now 15 years since I was a postman because I left there, took redundancy, started working at the school. Was there for 12 years, and I've been doing this for a few now, so yeah, it's got to be. Blimey, that's quite scary, isn't it? Very, very scary. 
but um, in Christmas delivery, myself and my brother was in the post and my sister-in-law and her brother and sister there was a whole load of us and uh, I always remember trying to get a van duty at Christmas and you'd go out delivering parcels and packages and dropping off other postman's pouches um, for their delivery and every Christmas you would have the salmon and flower day and it was where companies would send out because people would order whole salmon they'd order flowers for delivery to people and we would get cages and cages and cages and cages of flowers and fish and the vans would stink <laughs> and they'd just be honestly full to the rafters you've never seen so many in your life it was crazy this is feeds in grain south isn't it I, I, I did that kind of oh yeah of course i know where that is and then didn't think to double check that or I probably should have done so coupled with this i'm putting in here now and what we are going to sell to buy the new sale thing <laughs> tomorrow on the 15th when you open your advent calendar door we will have a new vehicle i'm just going to double check this because I, I'm, I know i'm probably right but um no that one's where we are yeah feeding grain south and with that we have come to the end of the episode for today december the 14th hope you've enjoyed it hope you're still enjoying it if you have if you are please give us a like if you don't subscribe yet please do if you want to leave a comment feel free and if you want to share this video then please be my guest whatever you should choose to do as always, thanks for watching.